Well, hello again, and welcome to Match Talk. I am Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And we're both back from a week, well, Ooh. you were a week camping, I was a half a week camping, yay. <laughs> it's now brutally hot out there. Oh, it was brutally hot the day we had to set up and the day we had of to course. break down. It was like you only know, after almost it rained. Degrees. Just at least it wasn't raining, but whatever. Yeah, it was. Uh, the rain came at the right times. It, uh, yeah, I mean we only had you know. It wasn't Tuesday, super disruptive, right? There was and, some on Saturday, and um, yeah, maybe late Saturday, but yeah. it was a it was a great event. We had a record attendance, more than two thousand yep. five hundred people, of yep. which two thirds were from out of state. People seem to be looking yeah. for answers, yeah. and, and you know, and I think the Free State th Project and Life in New Hampshire is an answer for yep. some people. Yeah, and not I, for Ray Buckley. Ray but. Buckley's <laughs> just a jerk. Can I just say, like, some of the things that come, that he says, I just think, God, how do you put your head on your pillow at night without like feeling like a real jerk? Because he's, he's just a nasty jerk. So here's my question, right? So, so. With a lot of the the sort of identity politics and the stuff that we see, right? Mm. When you start to really parse out what's going on there, there's no logic on the mm -mm. side of the left, right? No. Because if 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 we're saying, oh, we need to help minorities, right? Which right. you know, I mean, I mean, I think we should help everyone, right? So, but if so we're that's going, fine. right? But then I'm like, there is no smaller minority than the individual. Right, that's that's the smallest unit, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's each of us. Mm -hmm. And if the government was actually doing its job, it would be protecting each individual, right, rather and than not than groups group. of people and I pitting agree. them against themselves, you know, against each other. And you know, just just to tell you, I mean, I think this is a pretty insulting. Um, so I don't know. We had a bit of a Twitter spat. I can't even really no. remember where it started. I think I was being a little cheeky, and I said eh, winning, and then uh, <laughs> so you're like me, eh, and then the, winning. The, and the rejoinder was, um, he said something. Oh, he said, you know, oh, I don't represent the live free. Or, uh, he didn't say grant. He said I don't represent uh, American or New Hampshire values. You don't. I don't. And I was hmm. like, well, you know. Interesting. So, so. Um, because, because apparently being a bigot and rude and mean and just a total jerk, those are the American and New Hampshire values that we should all aspire right. to. Right. So, 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 I mean, I'll read the so response, but to be fair, so I did say, uh, he said something really like, and I was like, laugh out loud. Maybe you should move to Vermont and join your Bernie bros there, right? right? Which is fair. And so this was uh, Ray Buckley, the chairman. Ray's uh, response was sort of gross that an invasive species believes the natives should move from their home state so that invaders can create a dystopian fantasy world. Your twisted bastardization of liberty of, and freedom are not American values. Okay. Invasive species. Right. I mean, I don't know. I'm just going to say if we said Carla had said this about right. some it would be in Democrat. The union right. it, well, that'd be in the union leader. People would right. be outraged. Right. And I will tell you that uh, I was slightly outraged and a lot of other people were. I did reply by saying it's sort of gross that you would call your fellow humans who seek peace prosperity and freedom from government overreach and invasive species. But I guess you can't really expect better from people like you who think you own me. You don't, and time will teach you that. So I've never done a Twitter spat on the show because generally I don't think it's worth it. I also generally don't try and get into them. But you know, I just, you know, I'm gonna start to call out the 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 bigot bigotry mm -hmm. the xenophobia these democrats say the most heinous things that if i said them or someone on the right said them everyone would pee their pants right. but when you say it it's okay it's okay so i'm going to call it out every time and i so, hope you guys are ready so on that whole winning thing cuz I, <laughs> I use that a lot i use it like with nothing attached i just randomly once in a while just say Winning, Hashtag winning, because anybody who knows everybody who knows me knows usually what your which specific thing it's pertaining to. But I did think it was funny. I'm looking at this. New, um, let's back up a second. 
last week the New Hampshire legislature passed did the pass the budget. It was like 198, 181 or something like that. Um, this was while we were up camping and I was listening to, um, I think of all things, Dave Smith's podcast, which was starting to, starting to bore me because I did just feel like it was Libertarian Party back and forth for 90 minutes. And right. I was like 40 minutes in and I was starting to go like, what am I doing? I think I'm going to go listen to the budget. So I got like <laughs> the budget on my ear and I'm going to listen to podcast and the budget on my ear because I couldn't, you know, we have sketchy, it's questionable service up there. So and then I went back to my camper, like literally for the budget vote, like I, so I could see it. <laughs> but anyways, uh, the budget passed. Um, there were a lot of great things in the budget. There was $170 million in tax cuts, um, a phase out of the interest in dividends tax. So the, the retired people who live off of their investments here in New Hampshire don't feel like they have to leave to go, you know, find respite from taxes there. Um, reduces the meals and rooms tax that we all pay every time we eat out or rent a hotel from nine percent to eight and a half percent um puts in a restriction that um abortions can only happen before 24 weeks of gestation um unless the health of the mother is at risk um institutes um generates um, education savings accounts yes, for families that are at 300 percent of the poverty level so for a family of four that's somebody making about a family making about only seventy nine thousand oh, dollars a year, it? but it's still a start. It's it still mm. helps a lot of the most vulnerable kids okay. in New Hampshire, because on average those fam those kids can get about forty six hundred dollars for their families to use to better educate them, and then when the sweep when the general public realizes that what they've been hearing from the left that it's going to cause the public schools to implode when that doesn't happen it'll be that much easier to say well then we should be extending oh, you this mean to the more schools people. that didn't bother to open right. for a whole them, year those them. Ones. Okay. but i did chuckle so all these great things i feel like i'm leaving one um thing out oh lang there is some language on um ending the state of emergency a lot of people weren't happy with it but it's there's nothing now there is a, a mandated, there would be a, um, at least it forces the legislature to come in and vo vote on it, whether it's the right way or not, that's beside the point. I mean, I will say on some of this stuff, you know how they say it's it's making sausage it up is. at the state house. I'm like, honestly, some of it, we, we ended up in a worse place well, than we were that, before but that's we how, started, but which is government in a right. nutshell. But that's what happens in that last negotiation. We don't, it, we, you know, we, my we and their we and that one's we is all different. Um, you have to give and take to get at least the things you want. The education, I would have been very disappointed if the budget had failed and education savings accounts went away, even if it is only for 300%. I property. did see a tweet from Corey DeAngelis, yep. who's like a He's premier, a big, like yeah. sort of education specialist. Um, nationally mm -hmm. on, at this stage and and the tweet said new hampshire now has the second best school, school choice, choice program in which america is, which, which is fits pretty new exciting. hampshire's mentality but i so today i was and this is an article back from the 24th so it's from last week when the budget passed <laughs> i missed an entire week I, there, i'm like <laughs> apparently there was a whole new things going on things but, happened <laughs> um i thought it was funny that donna susie because we did mention i think victoria might have mentioned it last week um when she was asked about the abortion ban at 24 weeks um somebody asked her well are you okay with the fact that new hampshire has absolutely no restrictions on abortion which would allow somebody to have abortion right up till the day before they were due and she said she thought that was okay yes that's okay to do that and i was like oh my god like you just use those words somebody should be hitting you but her quote in here, among other things, is it turns my home state, the budget, it turns my home state into a place I no longer recognize. Who's this? Ha uh, Donna so, Suit, Senator. So, but wait, here. Hashtag winning. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sweet. exactly one of those moments where I was like, huh, winning. So here's the thing, right? So, so there is definitely a concerted effort to now do some kind of framing, right, of, mm. of a propaganda message mm. from the left, right? And it's this whole thing of, uh, you know, we're back to the language of the takeover and the invasion and the whatever, right? So <laughs> I did enjoy on the um, on that particular Twitter exchange with Ray Ray uh, that uh, chairman, comrade, whatever his name is, right? Uh, someone actually wrote because he said something about like, I'm a whatever generation granite stater, right? And I'm like, well, first of all, <laughs> I'm not sure your forefathers are like on board with your like, <laughs> idea about live, uh, 
locked down and fry or I don't, I don't know, know like whatever right but someone actually did say and this is where I'm saying that the there is no logical consistency so they can't actually win the arguments right. right which is why you know it always comes down to these personal attacks but someone said on the tweet they were like so when your forefathers was you know a- if you're eighth generation or whatever it was six uh, so when they came, so when it was they okay. came, it was okay. So you were you weren't an invasive species when you showed up, but we are. Well, and so you don't believe in the American value of you can move to better yourself. Well, and how insulting is is that general commentary about invas- invasive species and people not all being of the same mindset? How insulting is that to the very many people who live in our state? who are refugees and immigrants from other, I mean, besides yourself. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, we're, like all the Bhutanese people and the right. Sudanese people, they should be insulted by what this man says because he might have been directing the comments at you specifically in that tweet, but that's a mindset of a mentality that says, unless you are lockstep with everything I believe in, you're bad and shouldn't be here. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and it. frankly, it's part of the troubling sort of neo-Marxist sort of cultural revolution nonsense that we're seeing as a narrative that's coming out, right? It's like either you conform to the party platform and you believe what we believe, you, otherwise you're not, you're not allowed to exist, I guess? I mean, you know... It's, uh, you know, it's it's annoying. But anyway, I, I do see that there's this thinking that's going to come out. And I'm predicting it now. And you guys can hold my feet to the fire by December. We're going to see a lot of this sort of, I don't recognize the state. Yes. That we oh, just look saw. at the horror. This is not New Hampshire. Right. These aren't American values. Blah, blah, blah. Now, of course, they're actually lying to you because they're the ones trying to change things. And we're just trying to actually preserve our liberties (laughs) you know we're just actually at this stage trying to be like maybe we shouldn't live in a lockdown nation you know maybe we should be concerned about police state stuff and totalitarianism and those kinds of things from this group of people who think they can call people who don't agree with them names for no particular reason because that's the way you so did you see this uh this Mm. So Crypto what's funny, thing. we buzzed. So yeah. I came back from camping on Sunday, right? And we're laughing because you pick up the paper and I'm like, wait, what? So um, Jeremy Kaufman, who is a Manchester resident, him and his young family. I mean, they're, they're three little kids, <laughs> adorable little family, right? Anyways, Jeremy is a tech entrepreneur. Let's go with that. Um, and there was an article in the Union Leader, which I was glad to see it made the front page. Um, Because the federal government, the Securities and Exchange Commission, is going after his company, Library, L-B-R-Y, which I'm going to try to paraphrase it from, I'm usually really bad with the tech. Like, if somebody says to me, what's Bitcoin? I'm like, I don't know, way to buy a thing. I don't really, like, I get it. (laughs) My retirement plan. (laughs) No, no, no. But I'm saying, right, I know that answer, but I'm like, I don't understand it. And my brain doesn't want to. It's kind of like when you talk about video, I'm like, I don't want to. Right. So... I know what I know. There's a company called Library. I know that it it's a um, there's also Odyssey, which is kind of like another YouTube version. Think of that, where like you upload our videos. So, so it's a it's a non um, it's a decentralized so that you can't so that it's a nobody can, proof alternative right. to YouTube. Is somebody how can't they come along it. and take your videos down. Right, because which nobody should be able to take your videos down. I mean, not if you believe in freedom, right? right? Like if you don't believe in freedom of ideas and freedom right? of expression. I don't know, that's kind of the so, First Amendment. So, so you know, in building being this, an American value in, and such. In building a big tech company, because this isn't the only piece of tech growing in the world. Gmail is ever-changing. Um, PayPal is ever-changing. Uh, Facebook is ever, all technology. Google, in general, is always changing. I Other, mean, by its very definition, technology it's, is change, right. right? Because it's constantly right. evolving because so that's the point. So in order to constantly change, you've got to figure out ways to do this. And I, from the way I read the article, and I could be completely wrong because, again, tech, um, in, to encourage people to use the platform, so a creator like Carla can, in, to encourage you to put your videos out there, because if there's no content, nobody's going to use the tech. 
you can get then this little token and the more of these tokens allow you to do more things. So I tried to take it out of the tech world and I'm like, so why is that any different than say a Kickstarter for a board game? I mean, it's you literally know? the same as Chuck E. Cheese and their tokens. And their tokens. And the, but I mean, when you do... When, <laughs> but so, I don't see the SEC going after right, Chuck when E. When somebody's Cheese. trying to build a, a design a board game, right? They'll put out a Kickstarter because they have this really bad black and white version of this really awesome game. And then people put in money ahead of time to get the game later down here when it's completed in a much better form. And the more people who put into that Kickstarter for that board game, the nicer the game gets. We get better graphics and better little chicken. Okay, so why is this any different, right? Why is this any different than anybody investing in any business and saying, hey, this little bakery over here, I'm gonna go buy a muffin every day so that someday I can go buy a cake. It's all the way the market works. So the SEC somewhere in their stupid government, you know, brains decided to go after, we're not really sure. There are no, there was no complaint. There was no Nobody who complained to the government, hey, you need to stop this, um, went to... Well, there's no victim. Right. This is just simply, I think, a this is fishing the... expedition mm. by the alphabet soups who don't like certain people. Right. And it's political persecution, and I mean, in my opinion. In a nutshell, it seems like they went to library and said... Well, because you've got these tokens, it's like you're doing investments as if, because, and then the SEC, which started from the 1927 banking crisis during the, the you know, run on Wall Street, which I'm like, that's not anything like this at all. And which also, or, um, according to the article, employs 4,200 people. So thank you for the, whatever I mean, they're doing for just us. Just in case people forget, you know, Bernie Madoff, who did end up going to jail because of a vast Ponzi scheme yeah. that defrauded millions yeah. and millions and millions of people's money, or millions of dollars at least, uh, was the chairman of the SEC. Right. So like people think were complaining about right. him for, I believe, almost 10 years before they were like, Eh, man. So, so when you're an insider who's actually defrauding people, they take ten years to come sniff around. So poor Jeremy has um, basically SEC. This has been going on for years. This isn't new. This story's new because now they're persecuting well, because him they, more. They started by you know, sending threatening letters and doing all of that the way they usually do, it, right? And now the SEC has actually filed a complaint right. and the case will be heard in New Hampshire. But I think for me, the most compelling or difficult part of this is, right, so a lot of, um, a lot of innovative people and tech mm -hmm. people are doing new things. Right. That's what tech is. You're trying That's to what like, innovation is right? right. That's the you're trying to come up with with new things, better ways of doing things. And, uh, you know that's what the market is. And so when this was starting, there were no regulations, right. right? So Jeremy actually hired a really expensive law firm. He went to the SEC. He said, "Please tell me." How I'm supposed to do this? Like, so what's that we the can, compliance like, that I, you need? Yeah, like, what do you guys need? Like, I, I don't want to get into trouble here. And they were like, oh, we don't know. Go ask your lawyers. So he asked these lawyers. These lawyers advised him certain things. Then two years later, the SEC was like, yeah, no, that's uh, that's wrong. We don't think and, those are And right. so he's like, okay. What so are the answers? Can what you tell me what I need to do to comply? And they're like, no, no. go we ask your lawyers. And we don't really know. Because I don't think they know, I don't think this is about him complying. I'm with you. I think this is about, like Dan always this says. This is about the Bitcoin market. Well, and I think Dan says, the goes, crypto I think market. they're trying to get Jeremy to identify where somebody, maybe not him, but where somebody else it might not be complying because they don't know. Because no, they don't know that there's no compliance. They don't know because they don't have a, it's not like they're saying you must use mustard and ketchup and you're not using mustard and ketchup. They're just like food. Yeah. Or, and you're supposed to go like, well, what's that mean food? Well, you know, ask your lawyer what food means. Well, okay, so you... Oh. Right. So, 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 you know, I mean, it's troubling because, you know, everyone knows by now government's too big. They don't know what they're doing. They're just, you know, willy nilly prosecuting. And that really is a problem too, right? Right. We talk a lot about the criminal justice system, how we can reform, where it can be fixed. And this notion of this like, um, uh, uh, directed prosecution of certain, either certain groups of people. Yeah. I mean, we saw that, you know, with the yeah. IRS 10, 15 years ago yeah. with the Tea Party people. Yeah. There are lots of examples over time. And, um, 
And I don't think, you know, to not to force a left-right paradigm here, but I don't really see that when, when uh, Republicans are in power, they're that actually persecuting, persecuting yeah. the other side. Right. But we do know when Democrats, you know, are in power. We seem to see all sorts of interesting happen. persecution. That also seems to fit with the narrative that we know is a result of neo-Marxism and Marxism and uh, communism and socialism, which is at some stage, the people who are trying to control everyone actually have to get rid of their enemies. Now, whether that's gulags or camps or incarceration or just bankrupting them or whatever, you know, uh, we'll take John McAfee as an yeah. example. He committed suicide last week while we were at Porkfest. He suicide. was, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, he, he there, there are several tweets that I mean, actually say There's if, a whole rage of people if, if, if you find me dead, you know, right. I was pretty he much... He had it tattooed you know, on his arm, I think they said. That, like, if you find me dead, I didn't kill myself. So so basically what happened there, John McAfee started McAfee um, Software, yeah. which was privacy-forward software yeah. that actually helped with your security yeah. on your laptop and whatever. So smart guy. Right. S you know, well, smart Everybody's guy. laptop probably has his name on it somewhere. Uh, you know, it, it also, you know, kind of like, you know, he was, he was out there, I'm readily to admit it, you know, he, he's definitely got an interesting life story. But amongst other things, he did run as a Libertarian Party mm -hmm. candidate for president. Well, I mean, and you don't have um, to be exactly the same as everybody else. No, I mean, he was definitely a character. Right. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, they, they, the Spanish, he was in a Spanish prison, and they decided they were going to extradite him to, uh, to a, back to America. And this is apparently when he committed suicide. Um, so there are claims that there's, you know, some dead man switches, that there's information that may come out. He was going to talk about some CIA assets and some CIA actions and that kind of stuff. So it'll be interesting to see what comes from there. Um, the other thing I you brought, because yeah. we'll only have a few minutes, but so for those who don't remember, um, during when COVID kicked in, you had all these people who used to work in Massachusetts. They used to drive in their little cars to Massachusetts and work. And when you live in New Hampshire and work in Massachusetts, you have to pay the government of Massachusetts a state, a income. state income tax. Um, many of those people, because everybody was now re working remotely, now, prior to COVID, if you worked remotely, if you worked one day at home and four days in Massachusetts, you only paid income tax on the four days worth of salary. You didn't pay it on the one where you weren't in their state, which would make sense. But all these people went back to New Hampshire or wherever, um, and Massachusetts changed their tax structure and said, oh, no, 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 even if you went home and you're in another state, you still have to pay us Massachusetts income tax. Well, the governor um, sued like basically sued the state of New Hampshire suing the state of Massachusetts to say, you can't tax our people for not being working. In Massachusetts. And I think, I didn't read the too much of the article this morning. Basically, the United States Supreme Court decided seven to two, Alito and... Um, Gorsuch, I think. Was no, I, was, Alito um, and... Is Clarence... Yeah, it was Thomas. Clarence Thomas was said Thomas. they would they would have liked to have heard the case. Um, but they didn't decide against the case. They decided not to hear the case. I do think, in part, it comes down to the state of New Hampshire probably didn't actually have. If people well, claim people it can still, I think what will happen now is individuals, a group of individuals, I mean, will sue the state of Massachusetts to get the their earnings back because they're not working the, in the, their state. The smart lawyers are, you know, going to do hopefully a class action hopefully. suit and bleed them dry. Well, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's back. one thing to argue whether I agree or not. It's one thing to argue that when people are driving into Massachusetts to go to work, they're using their roads and they're using, okay, that's a, you know, whether I agree or not, but that is an argument. If those people are never going into Massachusetts, why would you have to pay for services in Massachusetts? Do I also have to pay for services in Wyoming? Because it's about as relevant. Yeah, it's, I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous. I'm really disappointed with the Supreme Court, I, I have to say. Well, I think that would have been a um, good case to hear because uh, Thomas and Alito did say they believe, they've said it in the past, that they do believe that the Supreme Court is the appropriate place for states to sue each other. Exactly. Because I think you're going to see it with pensions. You know, when California implodes and their pension system has to be filled, and they come after New Hampshire for money to bail them out. What is New Hampshire's, where is New Hampshire's recourse as a state? It would be with the Supreme Court, I would think so. Hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, may we live in interesting times, as so we always So fireworks say. For, the, for Independence Day are happening on Friday the 3rd. So for Carla and I, that means trauma for our dogs. <laughs> Luckily, um, old Schmelly is getting so yeah, old that she, she, can't, hear, she can't yep, hear it anymore. That happened with Daisy. It was, like, wonderful. Yeah. Um, so I'll turn on music in the house and try to distract the dog while they're doing fireworks. <laughs> but that'll be Friday night down in Arms Park. There will be no food vendors. People are encouraged to bring their chairs and a picnic dinner for themselves because there will not be food vendors as there were in past years. I think that's not necessarily a COVID thing, but in result it is, they lack of planning. Um, if it rains on Friday, it'll be on the 5th because you know, Manchester can't ever have 4th of July on the 4th. Um, can we just go back to doing things on the day they happen? Like this is part of the over planning of everything. Overthinking. Clearly, Overthinking. Carla is cranky because she had a very busy past week. <laughs> We're just a little, she's tired. I'm a little tired. My voice is a little crackly, I noticed. I mean, honestly, I'm just impressed I still have a voice. Usually by the end of Porkfest, I am. Um, so it's going to be hot today, tomorrow, Wednesday. Thursday, it drops back down. So, you know, make sure you stay inside. I think, I know the splash pad's open and Crystal Lake's open. I don't believe the pools are open yet, but I've been gone for a few days, so I might have missed something. Um, turn the sprinkler on, but don't leave it running too much because we are still kind of in a drought. So be conscious of the water you're using so that there, we don't run into any kind of restrictions from the government. Um, yeah. That's Get takeout it. from your local restaurant, and then you don't have to cook. <laughs> I actually have to do that because I have no groceries. Yeah, They're only I was going to get Elm House of Pizza yesterday. I was all excited. They were closed for employee appreciation. I was like, ah. Well, I'll have know, to get it like today. Or today. We, we, we appreciate I appreciated that he was appreciating his employees. And I will say this. Uh, there are four work signs all over this Yeah, state. there's no reason why anybody's not I working. I think everyone should be working. I agree. Okay, that's all we got this week. We're going to go and relax and stay cool. And we'll be back next <laughs> week with grumpy more exciting doings <laughs> of Manchester and the great state of New Hampshire. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. Us. Bye.